This is Channel 4 with Shh, You Know Who. Shop ship shape and ready for inspection, sir. <laughs> Defy anybody come in here and say, health food shop, pull the other one. This is a front for a secret right-wing army, or, or I'm a half a pound of organic bean sprouts. Well, it might even make some money. Isn't a point, Beamish. Don't want customers. Customers, nuisance. No time to run army. Good business, bad army. Bad army, bad business. Therefore, good business, bad business. QED. Look at all this rubbish. It can't fail to fail. <laughs> Good morning, madam. Can we help you? I hope so. A health food shop in this gastronomic desert is going to be an absolute boon. Really think so? Oh, dear. Do you have garam masala? Certainly not. Fighting fit. Haven't had a day's illness since I was 15. German measles. Insult to injury. Too young to fight them. Catch their filthy measles. Garam masala is an Indian spice mixture used in the preparation of curries. Oh. That garam masala with you. Don't know. Well, I presume you have clothes. None but what I stand up in. Of course. Somewhere. Cloves. Slight problem. Elusive coves, cloves. Mung beans. With respect, madam, cloves are spices. Wouldn't be mung beans. Mung beans are a kind of bean. Ah. With you. Miss Bemis, would you get this lady mung beans, cloves and garam what's it? Anything else, madam? Yes, I want dill seed, dill weed, whole wheat flour, acacia honey, rose hip syrup, quince cheese, goat yogurt, organic seaweed. Beamish! Are you paying attention? Yes, madam. I say it again. Throttle. I want What is it, Tom Major? Dill seed. It's my Doris, sir. Our impending nuptials is off, sir. Oh, sorry about that, Throttle. Stout woman ever I saw one. Yeah. Big loss. Quince cheese, goat yogurt, and organic seaweed. Times like this, chap needs stiff drink. That's better. Care to tell me what precipitated sad bust up? She cast aspersions on the size of a portion of my anatomy, sir. Oh dear. Bad luck, Throttle. Um, is there any, uh, as it were, justification for the aspersion? Let you be the judge of that, sir. Oh, no, Throttle, please, no need for that. Do you think I've got a pea-sized brain, sir? What? Oh, brain. Ah, well, I'd say there's still hope, Throttle. So what are you planning to do? Join Foreign Legion to forget? Don't need to do that to us, sir. Join your legion. Tremendous. I mean, not tremendous about Doris. Tremendous about you joining the army. <laughs> Ram Waller, Johnny Existence. Gives and takes away. Your loss, our gain. Welcome home, Throttle. So I did manage to get you them mercenaries and that arms dealer, sir. I, I reckon I can lay my hands on a thousand old uniforms, 300 quid the lot. That's marvellous, Throttle. Yes, I reckon I can be of use to you, sir. And in being so, I... I can forget my heartache. reckons he can lay his hands on a thousand uniforms. That's progress. Yeah, it certainly is. All we need now is 996 men to wear them. Antisocial swine, Johnny Sarcasm, Beamish. It's crazy Colin Carstairs, the mad meatless mercenary. Well, if that's your attitude. God's sake, Harry. I'm sorry, tasteless, apologise. Delighted to vegetable you again. What? 
It would have said meat, but you don't eat it. Joke. Flop. You, uh, you don't still fancy the job of running the shop, do you? Well, if it's still vacant, marvellous. Certainly is. Colin! Nancy. Possibly. I'm back, Nancy. I'm going to run the shop. That's wonderful. Let me show you round. Marvellous. Would you like to come this way? He's getting off with my sister. He's got another thought coming. Good for you. With you all the way. Yes, and you can keep your hands off her as well. You don't want anybody to get involved with your sister, do you? You're frightened she won't be free to look after you. You're jealous. Piffle! Had it all sorted out, Beamish. Emotions under control till that swine came. Ghastly rotter, Johnny Jealousy. Kicks you in the cobblers when you aren't looking. For God's sakes, Harry. Yes, I've been in front of a firing squad twice. Bullet through my left lung. Machete stuck in my right buttock. I won't tell you where the poison dart went. How perfectly dreadful. Yes. You know, Curly. I don't think I've ever wished any harm to anyone in my life. Except lefties, pacifists, perverts, feminists and foreigners, of course. But I find myself wishing something dreadful would happen to Carstairs. We mourn for our brother, Colin Carstairs. Violence was his trade. He took life for money. He survived many perils. He rejected his violent life. He took the path of peace and came to live with his friends at Dunkirk House. A shelf collapsed and he was killed by falling health foods. God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. Oh, no, Mommy. Mommy. Listen, God. I know whether you exist or not. Well, if you do exist, you know that. Don't exist, forget it. Hope you exist. Your sake as well as mine. Must be frustrating not existing. Anyway, about Carstairs kicking the bucket. I feel dreadful. I hope cause was what your chap said about you moving in the mysterious way your dude asked to perform. I hope it wasn't my fault. Didn't really want something awful to happen to Carstairs. Well, not that awful. Promise to be better in future. Go to church, all that caper. Stop swearing, calling Beamish a bastard. Well, that's about it. Amen. At ease. <laughs> You've got to believe me, Harry, that getting involved with Nancy is not going to make you happy. Hit nail on nap, I haven't. I want a freedom. Look after you, self-centered parasitic leech. Not at all. I'm doing it for your own good. Believe me. I don't. Well, far be it from me to run down my own sister. She's a kind of female Rommel. Admired Rommel. More like Goering, really. You just watch her in action, Harry. She's aggressive, domineering, willful, the most frightful. <laughs> Hello, Nancy. I've just taken six pounds, 82p. What have you two done? We've been holding strategic consultations. I thought Sergeant Major Throttle had joined what one might laughingly call our strength. Where the hell is he? In London. He reckons he can lay his hands on a thousand uniforms dirt cheap. Oh, nobody tells me, of course. Communication is the lifeblood in an army's veins. Our army's dying of anemia. Goering. What? Nothing. Nancy? It's not my turn again. It's not a question of turns, Nancy. Army, man's work. Shop, woman's work. Yes, well, uh, I'll, uh, I'll go sort this out while you, while you two discuss it. Shop, woman's work? 
detect just a touch of male chauvinism? Absolutely not. Women, in my book, top hole coves. But soldiering, man's work. Famous soldiers all got one thing in common. Blokes. Who ever heard of Lady Kitchener or Anita the Hun? Yeah. I'm a fair man. You name me one well-known female soldier and I'll withdraw everything I've said. Bodicea. Ah. Well, she was an awfully long time ago. She wasn't at the time. Well, of course she wasn't at the time. Nobody was a long time ago at the time. She was British and she was magnificent. I am British and I could be magnificent. Bravo. Oh, shut up. Right, to business. Objective, recruitment. Method, coppers. Nancy, your turn. Major Harry Kitchener, Wellington, Trascott, Queen's Own Natural Yogurt Regiment, reporting for Lisbon, Terrain, Tower. Well, believe me, Nancy, I'm saying this for your own good. But getting involved with Harry is not going to make you happy. Far be it from me to run down an old friend, but he's a greedy, lazy, selfish, dim, fat-headed oaf. You're wasting your breath, Tim. Harry can condemn himself without your help. Man sets up an army, finds himself selling goat's cheese to housewives. But well, what on earth are they all coming for? Odd customers, customers. If we don't want them, why are we being so reasonable to them? Why aren't we rude to them? Double all the prices. Fleece them, insult them. That'll soon drive them away. Genius. Genius. That's genius, Nancy. <laughs> Marking up prices, party. Party prices up. Mark left. Good morning, madam. What can I do for you? Do you have cottage cheese? Certainly do. Two pounds a quarter. That's rather expensive, isn't it? Extortionate. Only shot for miles. Taking advantage. Greedy, short-sighted, malaise of our time. Trouble back. Excellent. Come on, you chaps. Uh, and I would Can't like... better things to do than serve you. I wonder how many he managed to bring. One, two, three, You've done a grand job, Sergeant Major. Oh, thank you, sir. Mom. Uh, Mom, sorry, sir. Well done, Throttle. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. You're invaluable to us, Throttle. Sorry to hear you say that, sir. Sorry? Not with you. Why are you sorry? Uh, request to make, sir, permission to desert, sir. Desert, Throttle? Yes, sir. My Doris has come back. Nuptials on again, sir. Throttle. So I knew you'd be pleased, sir. Big blow for me, Throttle. A big blow. It'll be to the Major, I said, Doris. Good men don't grow on trees, no, Throttle. Good men don't grow on trees, Doris, I said. Reconsider this disastrous decision before it's too late, Throttle. Mind you, Doris, sir. Major Truscott will put our happiness before his own self-interest, Doris, I said. Well, push off, then. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, by the way, sir, I reckon I can still be of use to you, sir. Whilst obtaining those uniforms yesterday, I came across a couple of potential recruits, sir. Splendid. Suggest you suggest they pop down and see us. Yes, I suggested they pop down and saw you, sir. I told them to pretend to be customers in the shop, sir. And for identification purposes, I gave them a simple password. What was this simple password, Sergeant Major? Well, one that, in view of the ridiculously low price tags in your shop, couldn't possibly be misunderstood. Splendid. What is it? They are rather expensive, aren't they? Push off, throttle! You blithering idiot. Stupid man. Think thousand uniforms to choose from. Find one that fits. You think out of a thousand uniforms I'd find one? The bore, Beamish. Done all that. Customer, Nancy. No, no, not suggesting you serve them because you're a woman, anyone not in uniform. Oh, the lengths you'll go to avoid facing the customers. How will we know the customers are saying they're rather expensive, aren't they, as the password, or because things are rather expensive nowadays? Simple. Rely on a blighter I've always had a lot of time for. Johnny Judgment. My job, get out of this uniform. 
Get in there and they're heat of the action. Secret recruits, passwords, the pulse is quicker. Right, this is important. Judgment needed. I'm taking over. I find your faith in me touching. Good morning. Can I help you? Well, uh, I want some haricot beans. Haricot beans coming up. There we are. One bag of haricot beans, one pound ten p. They're rather expensive, aren't they? Through that door with you in a jiffy. Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Vicar. I'll make no comment. I'm not on duty. Wrong attitude. Always on duty. Church almost empty. Not surprised. What can I get you? Have you any black olives? Olives black, Greek, in brine. Packets one, vicar for the use of. Pounds one, pences ninety-nine, sir. They're rather expensive, aren't they? You a real vicar. I beg your pardon. Only the two of us here are a real vicar. Say so, end of the matter. Aunt, go through that door, see you in a jiffy. I am the vicar of this parish. I recently conducted a funeral service for you. My wife likes black olives. I have no idea what you're talking about. My apologies, sir. I can't be too careful these days. A lot of confidence vicars around. Got these hot dog collars falling off the back of a hearse. Harry! Mrs. Beaver sent Tommy for some harico beans. Oh, sorry, Sonny. Misunderstanding. Have them on the house. Oh, thanks. Trust my colleague is helping you to find some wildly overpriced items, vicar. Morning. They're rather expensive, aren't they? Uh, yes. Been a mistake. Should be 60p. No. They're rather expensive, ain't they? Haven't got 60p. Come back later when you have. Read me? No. Not now. Later. Anything else, sir? Oh, oh no. No, thanks. Oh, well, give us a quid and we'll call it quits. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Yes? It's the secret army, mate. Security. But there's nobody else here. It's the principle of the thing. Right way and wrong way of doing things. Password, please. I've forgotten it. They're rather expensive, aren't they? They're rather expensive, ain't they? Good man. Did Sergeant Major Throttle send you? Yeah. Good God. And was that chap I had to throw out? Of course, there was genuine pucker vicar in shop. Didn't want genuine pucker vicar to know this wasn't a pucker shop. Was he your friend? Yeah. I'll go and fetch him, eh? <laughs> this army lark of yours has a bit of a giggle, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> bit of a giggle? We're looking for people with convictions. Oh, uh, we got plenty of them, mate. And what were you in for, Ron? A grievous bodily arm. GBH. Well, this geezer said I was a great thick ape who couldn't express myself except through violence. So I thumped him, didn't I? I suppose you're going to tell us that you both come from broken homes. Oh, right. I broke both of them on myself. Ah, Charn Award. Tremendous. Right, introductions. Uh, Ron Boat, Stubby Collins, Tim's sister Nancy. Cool. Whoa. Quite. Uh, so, uh, where's the rest of your troops in? Um, glad you asked me that. There aren't any. What do you mean, there aren't any? Major Truscott uses language with fine precision. When he says there aren't any, he doesn't mean I know a little cafe five miles outside Canterbury where the omelettes are repulsively greasy. He means there aren't any. You mean, there aren't any? So that. It's a prerequisite of any activity that it has to begin. Somebody always has to be first. If you haven't got the guts to be the first of the few, even though before long you would be among the first few of the many, then let me be the first to say I hope this is the last we ever see him. We don't need doubting scum. We don't want doubting scum. Goodbye. Yeah. Well. Come on, Ronald. Yeah. Well, 
done Nancy. Yes, thanks. Even if they were our only two recruits. Surely you'd rather no recruits than recruits like that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Not like our old army days, is it, Harry? Officers and chaps sitting, having tea together, chatting frankly. Yes. Shall make that mistake again. Tell us what made you decide to join. Uh, well, I, I met my Doris for some pub grub, uh, as it is termed these days, Mum. Jumbo sausage and chips. Uh, yes, we was late, and it was either that or curry. What is pub curry but disguised leftovers? We would have plumped for the stuffed aubergines, but they was finished. Oh, Lionel. <laughs> he lacks social confidence, so he tries to make out he's more sophisticated than what he is. <laughs> Mum, <laughs> so... Suppose we skip the pub grub and get on to how you decided to join. Uh, well, 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 I said there can't be many marriages where both partners are drill sergeants. <laughs> I mean, there's more to life than bathroom suites in duck egg blue. Let's forego the council house in Mitcham and join Major Truscott's secret you-know-what and dedicate our marital bliss to stopping this great nation of ours from becoming a cesspit. Bravo! Well spoken, Doris. The tide has turned. Yes? Good God. Hello, Doris. Lionel. We've been thinking. We don't say no talk like what we took from her from nobody. Especially a woman. Nobody says goodbye to us. Except us. Right? Now, having said that, maybe if she thinks we're scum, it's her own fault. Because we were a bit quick off the mark. Because somebody does have to be first. So she's right about that. Plus the fact we want to help our country against the extreme left. Right? Right. Plus the fact we got bugger all else. Ah. Uh, splendid. Welcome aboard, chaps. <laughs> Grab up. Well done, that woman. No. Grub is not up. I had a thought, that's all. If this is meant to be a secret army, what are you wearing uniforms for? Uniforms plug hole. Sell them, Sergeant Major. Ha! Making progress, are we? 